Hi, my name is Detlef Obal and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Anesthesiology and Perioperative Medicine at the University of Louisville. On behalf of my co-authors Dong Sheng Yang and Daniel Sessler from the Cleveland Clinic, I will discuss the article entitled Perioperative Doses of Under the Tone or Dollar the Tone Do Not Lengthen QTC Interval, which will be published in the upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Approximately a third of all patients given general anesthesia experience postoperative nausea and vomiting, and the incidence can approach up to 80% in high-risk patients. 5 hydroxytryptophan free receptor antagonists like Pondolatone or Dolatone are the most common used drugs to prevent or treat postoperative nausea and vomiting and frequently used perioperative. One major side effect of agents of this drug class is QTC prolongation with the potential life-threatening risk of cardiac arrhythmias like Tosal. In 2011, the FDA issued a drug safety communication addressing this issue. This statement was mainly based on the doses given during chemotherapy, which is far higher than the perioperative used one. Because surgical patients are exposed to a wide variety of QT prolonging drugs, like paralytics, volatile anesthetics, and pain medications, we were wondering whether adding an under the tone or dollar the tone to this cocktail would accelerate QTC prolongation. And approximately 30% of all surgical patients are diabetics with the risk of baseline QTC prolongation. Because of this increasing number of patients, we tested whether under the tone or dollar the tone caused worsening of QTC interval. We performed a retrospective data analysis in which patient data from March 2006 to September 2010 were extracted from the Cleveland Clinic Perioperative Health Documentation System and the Cleveland Clinic Pharmacy pharmacy's EPIC system. The analysis was restricted to adults who had non-cardiac surgery and who had an available preoperative 12-lead EKG and one within two hours after the end of surgery. We compared patients who received either under the tone or dollar the tone with patients who did not receive these drugs. Patients who received either any of five antiemetic drugs. These are dexmethasone, uh, diphenylhydrolamine, droperidol, promethazine, or scopolamine, or patients who received amiodarone were excluded from the study. Our primary outcome was the change of QTC from baseline and whether postoperative QTC exceeds the threshold of 500 milliseconds after administration of under the tone or dollar the tone compared to control patients. We used a multivariable linear regression analysis to assess the association between 5 receptor antagonists and the change in QTC interval from baseline. And in case of a significant interaction, we would further test whether diabetes affects this interaction. Both analyses were adjusted for potential confounding variables like patient's demographics, past medical history, type of surgery, or for the later part of the analysis, also for preoperative QTC interval. Out of 3,041 patients who met the primary inclusion criteria, 505 were excluded because they were given any of the six previously mentioned exclusion drugs. Additional 84 patients were excluded because of an incomplete baseline information. So we ended up with 1,429 patients who received um, 5-HG3 receptor antagonists and 1,039 control patients, making this the biggest patient cohort in which perioperative QTC interval was ever measured. As expected, 30% of the patients were diabetics in both groups. The main finding of our study is that under the tone or dollar the tone do not further increase postoperative QTC interval compared to control patients. Although 20% of all patients' postoperative QTC interval exceed 500 milliseconds, there was no difference between both study groups. 
One third of all patients receive three or more additional potential QTC prolonging drugs, but interestingly, we found no interaction with either QTC prolongation nor the fraction of patients exceeding 500 milliseconds. About a fifth of our patients were diabetics, and these patients had higher likelihood of QTC prolongation. Surprisingly, despite this predisposure, administration of 5-HD3 receptor antagonists did not result in extended QTC duration. This is the largest published analysis of perioperative QTC interval, but as any retrospective analysis, it potentially includes selection bias or confounding factors. It is possible that some effects of 5-HD3 receptor antagonists may have disappeared between administration of the drug and final ECG evaluation. Therefore, a prospective for future trial will evaluate the electrophysiological effects immediately after administration of 5-HD3 receptor antagonists until the end of PEQ time. Our take-home message is that in perioperative common low doses, 5-HD3 receptor antagonists do not produce potential dangerous perioperative ECG changes and do not seem to warrant a drug safety warning from the FDA. On behalf of my co-workers, Dr. Yang and um, Dr. Sessler, I thank you for your attention and hope that our findings will assist your patient care in the future. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.